Hey, I'm golf broadcaster Matt Adams, the updated and expanded second edition of my book, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments, is now available. Readers can expect to march with Arnie's Army at the 1960 U.S. Open, relive Jack Nicklaus's remarkable 1986 Masters win, and be amazed by the Tiger Slam. The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments. Pick it up where fine books sold, including barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. Thrive Sweet Productions. It's February 7th, and on this day in 1994, Michael Jordan signed with the Chicago White Sox to pursue his dream of playing Major League Baseball. By this point in his life, the 30 year old, soon to be 31 year old Michael Jordan had accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish with back to back to back world championships with the Chicago Bulls in 91, 92, and 93. He retired the previous November. Now, his father, James, had been an avid baseball fan and passed along the love of that sport to his son, encouraging him to play it. James Jordan had been brutally murdered on July 23, 1993, and Michael's pursuit of Major League Baseball was a way to honor his father. The owner of the Bulls was also the owner of the Chicago White Sox, Jerry Reinsdorf. After the success that Michael had brought him with the Bulls in the last decade, he was more than willing to give him his opportunity. Wearing number 45, Jordan started in double-A ball with the Birmingham Barons, but struggled at the plate, hitting just above the Mendoza line and striking out 114 times. When he did reach base, though, he was tough to stop, leading the team in stolen bases that year. Say what you want about his baseball career, but there was talk about Michael being moved to AAA ball in the spring of 95, so somebody believed in him. The big thing that thwarted Jordan's pursuit of his major league dream was the major league baseball strike that started in August that year and stretched on in April of 95. Jordan returned to the Bulls in March of 1995 and said later that if the strike had not happened or stretched on as long as it did, he never would have returned to the NBA. Also on this day, in 1949, Joe DiMaggio became the first $100,000 a year ball player. In 1976, Toronto's Daryl Sittler scored 10 points in an 11 4 win over Boston to set an NHL record that still stands today. He scored six goals and assisted four others in the win. Prior to this game, Sittler had been slumping, scoring only five goals in the previous 17 games. And last year on this day, LeBron James had a step-back jumper with 10.9 seconds left in the third quarter in the game against Oklahoma City to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and become the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. That's all for today. I'll have more tomorrow on This Day in Sports History. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history. But as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment. You know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.